Last week, the whole world witnessed the most disastrous presidential debate in American history. And what I'm about to tell you is something we're not hearing from anybody. All right, folks, let's get into it. Uh, Obviously, there's a lot to go over here. And I want to just say this right off the bat. We're going to go over some of the footage from the presidential debate between Joe Biden and former President uh, Trump. And I think that there's some really important things to talk about before we get into this a little bit. First of all, we're going to cover roughly about 10 minutes of the footage from the debate, probably some of the most disastrous examples of how bad it went and why, as Americans, we should should all be cringing because of what happened. We're going to go over some of those uh, pieces of footage. And of course, as usual, I'm going to provide commentary in every single one of those instances. Now, once again, I'm sure that most of you have already seen the debate. The purpose of this is for me to provide commentary concerning it. But the last piece of footage that I'm going to show you is perhaps the one that is most significant to the issue that I am bringing up today because I can promise you very few, if any people, are commenting on this part and there is so much to be said here. And I think that it's really, really important because there is biblical precedent for what I'm about to say and make no mistake, it is a very important precedent to discuss. One other thing that I wanna mention and that's this, as we go over some of this stuff, I want to encourage you to be a person who is in prayer because our country is in very, very deep turmoil and trouble. And folks, for a lot of reasons that a lot of folks are not discussing. So let's get into this. We'll talk about it. And I will discuss what I believe some of the many implications are as a result of this, especially with what the Democrats are facing right now in what will be undoubtedly the replacement of their candidate. So there's a lot to talk about here, but let's get into some of the basics. We'll go over them, go over some of the things that we actually uh, saw that most of us noticed and were just appalled by. We'll cover all that together. And then after that, uh, I will go over that one last piece of footage that concerns me the most. And we'll get into why that's a big deal. We'll talk about the biblical precedent concerning it, and we will undoubtedly have what I hope to be a very meaningful conversation over a very serious issue. All right, so we'll start off with the very first piece of footage that might be one of the worst moments of the debate. There were some pretty bad ones. This one was terrible, especially with how the the president just ended the sentence. Very, very bad. Let's watch this. Making sure that we're able to make every single solitary person uh, eligible for what I've been able to do with the uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with. Uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare, it's like somebody punched him in the gut. He can't, he can't even get the words out. And the words that he gets out are terrible. We finally beat Medicare after going, uh, 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 uh. It's, 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 guys, it is sad. I'm not even here to mock the president. I actually thought prior to this debate that it would be a lot of fun watching him fumble, but quite frankly, watching him fumble as bad as he's been fumbling, it was not fun to watch. It was terrible to watch. It is bad for our country. Our country is being viewed as a nation that's being led by a man who isn't really leading it. Watch this, folks. Let me play the introduction to the president himself as he's walking in and watch what he does when he's walking in. Now, you should note this. It's very important you understand this. There was no audience for this debate. It was part of the debate rules. It was going to be an empty room. It's a studio they walk out on. The only people that are there are the camera people and the moderators. Look at what the president does. Watch this as he walks in and note the fact that he's walking in so feebly. Watch this. The 46th president of the United States, Joe Biden. Folks, how are you? Great to be here. Thank you. I mean, he's saying hello. Hi, waving at people that aren't there and saying good evening. Thank you. Like, they're clapping for him. I mean, it's so strange. Like, that's heartbreaking to watch. Watch the former president walk in. And I'm not trying to do this to compare. I'm just showing you what, 
I mean, cognitive failure looks like and what normal behavior looks like. It's, it's just unbelievable to me. Watch this. Welcome the 45th president of the United States, Donald Trump. We are very, very close to World War III, and he's driving us there. And Kim Jong-un and uh, President Xi of China, Kim Jong-un of North Korea, uh, all of these, Putin, they don't respect him. They don't fear him. They have nothing going with this gentleman, and he's going to drive us into World War III. He's not wrong about that, by the way. I mean, he's 100% right. Nobody fears Joe Biden. Not a single soul. As a matter of fact, people, he's the laughing stock of the world. And this, this is not me making an anti-Joe Biden video. I need everybody to understand this is reflective of a much larger problem with our country. Even the CNN pundits were ripping Joe Biden after the debate. But look at his response. Watch this. You want a World War III, let him follow and win and let Putin say, do what you want, NATO. I will have that war settled between Putin and Zelensky as president-elect, before I take office on January 20th, I'll have that war settled. People being killed so needlessly, so stupidly, and I will get it settled, and I'll get it settled fast before I take office. Isn't it amazing to hear what Biden says about NATO and then basically, in contrast, what Donald Trump says? The reason why Donald Trump has such confidence in the fact that he'll get that war to stop is because he understands the corruption with respect to NATO's representations and the corruption of the United States of America as they followed with that in, in uh, basically the expansion of NATO. We've talked about this so many times. Russia was, in essence, forced into Ukraine as a result of the political maneuverings and the expansion of the military industrial complex going into Ukraine and using NATO as the baseball bat to be able to do it. We made Russia a promise. We didn't follow to that promise. We, matter of fact, lied to Russia and Putin was put in a very difficult position. I'm not defending anybody, but what I am simply saying is Donald Trump will undoubtedly walk in there and basically say, NATO, you're nothing without us. Back away. You're going to back away because if you don't back away, we're walking away from NATO, which means you no longer have any firepower and Putin will be glad, super glad to walk away from that. As a matter of fact, Putin may enter into some type of an agreement with a whole bunch of nations and say, we wanted peace in the first place. I would bet you something like that would happen. And I would also bet you that Zelensky in all of his corruption and all of that stuff will know it's game over. This isn't going to work anymore. And he will make it work. And he's right. These other people do fear him. They are scared to death of what Trump could do or wouldn't do. Understand that for a second, folks. I'm not trying to defend Trump here. This is not my position because you'll see in just a minute why I made this video and why it's such a big deal because this is tragic. What you're going to see is absolutely tragic. Watch this. The only person on this stage is a convicted felon is the man I'm looking at right now. And the fact of the matter is he isn't, he's, what he's telling you is simply not true. The fact is that there was no effort on his part to stop what was going on up in Capitol Hill. And all those people, every one of those who are convicted, deserves to be convicted. He's so evil saying that President Trump is a convicted felon, the way that he's saying it with the kind of tone and the approach, because the bottom line is President Trump is a convicted felon because this man's Justice Department decided to prosecute political opponents. That's exactly what's going on. And the whole January 6th thing is exactly that. And he's going to bring up January 6th here, but it is so bad because he's just put on display to the whole world that, yeah, I am politically persecuting, literally politically persecuting this man because of his views. This is, this is just absolutely crazy. But watch what happens. The crimes that you are still charged with, and think of all the civil penalties you have. How many billions of dollars do you owe in civil penalties for for molesting a woman in public, for doing a whole range of things, of having sex with a porn star on the night while your wife was pregnant. By the way, it's really interesting. This was not a criminal case that was filed against him with respect to this woman because it was very clear that there was no evidence of any of that stuff. There was a uh, an issue that was a private matter that was actually dealt with. I don't, none of us know what the details of that are. And that woman that he's talking about that happened in that dressing room or whatever that was, it was already unfounded. We saw the interviews of this woman basically bragging about the position that she took in not telling the truth about the whole thing. So the president knows exactly 
exactly what he's doing when he's saying this. Actually, well, his handlers know exactly what he's doing when he's saying this. And they're lies. They're all lies, okay? Make no mistake about it. The president of the former president of the United States isn't going to rape anybody, okay? He doesn't need to. And I'm not trying to be derogatory or vulgar or, any, or vulgar or anything like that. And I'm not, look, I want everybody to understand this. I'm not defending Trump. I'm just simply stating the facts. It's really important that we understand that. I mean, what, what, what are you talking about? You, you have the morals of an alley cat. By the way, this won't be the first time you see this. He'll continue to say things like this. You have the morals of an alley cat. You're a this, you're a that, you're a loser, you're a whiner. He did that because he was instructed to because they wanted President Trump to take the bait. They wanted President Trump to get really ugly back at him. And I will commend the president, the former president, for, of course, controlling himself and not losing his cool and just actually allowing the merits to stand upon themselves. But that's exactly what uh, is happening here. Give me a minute, sir. I didn't have sex with a porn star. Well, I took two tests, cognitive tests. I aced them, both of them, as you know. We made it public. He took none. I'd like to see him take one, just one. And, you know, we knock on wood wherever we may have wood that I'm in very good health. I just won two club championships, not even senior, two regular club championships. To do that, you have to be quite smart and you have to be able to hit the ball a long way. And I do it. He doesn't do it. He can't hit a ball 50 yards. He challenged me to a golf match. He can't hit a ball 50 yards. By the way, a lot of people say that it's childish that President Trump uh, was willing to engage on this golf thing, but President Trump was not engaging on the golf thing with the intent to uh, uh, basically say, hey, I'm look, I'm better than you. I'm a better golfer than you, like some childish, childish engagement. The reason why the president did that was to demonstrate his physical aptitude and his emotional, uh, mental, and cognitive aptitude. That's all he was doing. He was simply trying to demonstrate the fact that he's in great health, he's very active, he's involved in sports on a pretty regular basis, and he keeps, he takes good care of himself. And the reality of it is, I mean, for the most part, that's probably very true. He's as sharp as a tack. I'm not saying uh, anything, uh, you know, uh, other than that, the man is in better shape as a 80 plus year old than I am in my forties. Okay. I think that that's a very obvious statement. Okay, here we go. You can see he is six foot five and only 223 pounds or 235 pounds. Well, you said six, four, 200. Well, anyway, that's it. You're He's confused. He doesn't even, know. it's so sad. Anyway, just take a look at what he says he is and take a look at what he is. Look, I'd be happy to have a driving contest with him. The re I got my handicap, which when I was vice president, down to a six. Uh, and but by the way, I told you before, I'm happy to play golf if you carry your own bag. You should see the reaction on Trump's face when he's talking about a six handicap. I mean, look, um, I'm not an avid golfer. Matter of fact, golf is not my thing. I don't know a lot about golf, but I can tell you this right now. Uh, former President Trump is all about golf. He loves golf. He owns a whole bunch of golf courses. He golfs all the time. So you can understand the reactions on his face when he's hearing Joe Biden lie through his teeth. The man needs help stepping down one flight of stairs. Heck, not even one flight of stairs. He needs help stepping down one stair. That's what happened after the election, okay? I'm pointing this out because we're going somewhere with this. Believe me, we're going somewhere with this. If it's a fair and legal and good election, absolutely. I would have much rather accepted these, but the the fraud and everything else was ridiculous. And if you want, we'll have a news conference on it in a week, or we'll have another one of these on a, in a week. But I will absolutely, there's nothing I'd rather do. It would be much easier for me to do that than I'm running again. I wasn't really going to run until I saw the horrible job he did. He's destroying our country. By the way, I, I believe that. I'll just say that right now because there's a lot of people that had to go to him and say, come on, you need to rerun. Uh, he wasn't planning on doing it. He was like, I'm done with this. But when he saw how bad the, the condition of the country was in, he was very motivated to do so. Again, it's true. It's not a lie. Okay. Listen to what Biden says here. Well, listen to this. There is no evidence of that at all. And I tell you what, I doubt whether you'll accept it because you're such a whiner. The idea, if you lose again, you accepting anything, you can't stand the loss. Something snapped in you when you lost the last time. I was so you don't notice the, the personal attacks that he's making at the president. I believe he was, he was instructed to do that, assuming that he could get, you know, a reaction out of President Trump and create the kind of uh, mess that was at that last debate. But President Trump didn't buy it. So good for him. Uh, that's all I have to say. I was recently in, in, in uh, France for D-Day. 
and I spoke to all about those heroes that died. I went to the World War II cemetery, World War I cemetery he refused to go to. He was standing with his four-star general, and he told me, he said, I don't want to go in there because they're a bunch of losers and suckers. My son was not a loser, was not a sucker. You're the sucker. You're the loser. Look at that dementia moment of anger. <laughs> you're a sucker. You're a loser. It's sad. That's not the saddest part of this whole thing. Wait till we get to the end of this. Then I, what I'm going to do is fix the tax system. For example, we have a thousand trillionaires in America. I mean, billionaires in America. And what's happening? They're in a situation where they, in fact, pay 8.2% in taxes. If they just paid 24% or 25%, either one of those numbers, they'd raise $500 million, billion dollars, I should say, in a 10-year period. We'd be able to right wipe out his debt. We'd be able to help make sure that all those things we need to do, child care, elder care, making sure that we continue to strengthen our health care system, making sure that we're able to make every single solitary person eligible for what I've been able to do with the uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare. Thank you, President uh, Biden. President Trump. Well, he's right. He did beat Medicare. He beat it to death and he's destroying Medicare. We have the greatest economy in the history of our country. Uh, we have never done so well. We've Every, everybody was amazed by it. Other countries were copying us. We got hit with COVID. And when we did, we spent the money necessary so we wouldn't end up in a Great Depression, the likes of which we had in 1929, by the time we finished. So we did a great job. We got a lot of credit for the economy, a lot of credit for the military, and no wars, and so many other things. Everything was rocking good. The idea that they're going to... I'm not... I'm proposing that everybody, they pay... The millionaires pay 1%, 1%. So no one after, uh, I would not raise the cost of Social Security for anybody under $400,000. After that, I began to make the wealthy begin to pay their fair share by increasing from 1% beyond to be able to guarantee the program for life. Folks, he doesn't know the difference between billions, millions, and trillions. He's conflating all kinds of terms together. He's very confused. It's very obvious. His cognitive capacity is remarkably diminished far more than it was even a few years ago. It's bad, it's bad, it's bad. But you know what's worse? What you're gonna see at the end. Most extensive, most extensive climate change legislation in history, in history. We find ourselves, and by the way, black colleges, I, I came up with $15 billion for HBCUs, historic black universities and colleges, because they don't have, those, they don't have the kind of contributors that they have to build these laboratories and the like. You got to ask these people to put up the money. We're over $100 billion more spent, and it has a bigger impact on them because of location, because we have an ocean in between. You got to ask them, as far as Israel and, and Hamas, Israel's the one that wants to go. He said the only one that wants to keep going is Hamas. Actually, Israel is the one, and you should let him go and let him finish the job. He doesn't want to do it. He's become like a Palestinian but they don't like him because he's a very bad Palestinian. He's a weak one. I'm the guy that organized the world against Iran when they had a full-blown intercontinental ballistic, ballistic missile attack on Israel. He's a liar on that one. He, he didn't organize any of that. As a matter of fact, quite frankly, he's the one that enabled Iran to attack Israel and gave Iran the confidence to be able to do it. Um, it's just crazy how much he's lying. And of course, uh, Iran is going to take way more advantage of it because Joe Biden is extraordinarily weak here. And uh, quite frankly, he doesn't even know his alphabet at this point. He's, he's just completely gone. And I will tell you, I do agree with the idea that if Trump was in office, I, I, I would be willing to bet that Hamas would have never done what they did. Guaranteed that would have happened, would not have happened because Iran was already getting ready to run away. That was exactly what was happening. As a matter of fact, Iran was uh, willing to sign on the dotted lines to respond to the sanctions that had been given to them. But they chose to wait strategically until the election was decided. And when they knew that Joe Biden was coming into office, they went absolutely nuts. And that's when we saw the resurrection of the JCPOA and all the other things that were going on. So um, this shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. No one was hurt. No one Israeli was accidentally killed. And it just stopped. We saved Israel. We are the biggest pr pr producer of support for Israel of anyone in the world. They didn't save Israel. God saved Israel and Israel saved Israel. Sorry, United States of America didn't do anything of a sort. As a matter of fact, we can go back and look at some of the history of what's happened in the Red Sea as of late. 
And interestingly enough, when the Yemeni Houthis chose to attack in the Red Sea, it was a weapon of last resort that was used by our naval ships that actually stopped the attack, and it should have never been that way. Uh, of course, it is interesting when you look at Israel's Iron Dome system, it's uh, virtually impenetrable. So uh, let's get real here. Saudi Arabia actually probably worked harder uh, than the United States of America did, at least from within the context of Iran, because unlike the United States of America, Saudi Arabia did not contribute to the fact that Iran had all the money to launch all these missiles in the first place. I think it's an important point to point out. And so that's, there, there are two different things. Hamas cannot allowed to be continued. We continue to send our experts and our intelligence people as to how they can get Hamas. I don't even have to get into the Israel thing. I think there's a lot of lies that are being communicated with respect to the Israel thing. I want to make myself very, very clear. President Trump by far was the most supportive president. Uh, my guess is in U.S. history towards Israel and the causes of Israel. And there's a lot that has been done for Israel. So let's not even go there. President uh, Biden loses this argument a whole bunch. By the way, there are so many other points where President Biden failed. There's a video, I'll play this for you right now, where President Biden just starts babbling. And at the end of the video, President Trump says, I don't know what you just said. And quite frankly, I don't think they know what you just said. It's very, very sad. That's how bad things are getting. Let me play that video for you real quick. And then afterwards, I'm going to play the portion of this debate that has completely left me distraught. And this is the thing that you are not being told by anybody. This is the thing that is not being discussed by anybody. And we need to have a discussion concerning it because it's really, really, really important. I've changed it in a way that now you're in a situation where there are 40% fewer people coming across the border illegally. It's better than when he left office. And I'm going to continue to move until we get the total ban on the, 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 the total initiative relative to what we're going to do with more Border Patrol and more uh, asylum officers. President Trump? Uh, I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. <sighs> Isn't that so sad? I mean, the guy is babbling. I think what President Biden actually said at the end of that sentence is asylum officers, I think. Uh, but it, it was so unclear and his thoughts were so bad. And, you know, I think that was probably the kill shot of the whole debate. But what you're about to watch right now is the part of the debate that is so disturbing to me. I'm going to tell you why. We'll talk a little bit about the Bible. We'll talk a little bit about the biblical precedent. We'll talk about what God says about this. But I just need you to pay very close attention to what you're about to see. Because what you're about to see is what disturbs me the most. And the result of this video will produce the discussion that we're about to have that will last for only a few minutes. But it should be the reason why every single one of us that love God are disturbed. Watch this. As president, would you block abortion medication? First of all, the Supreme Court just approved the abortion pill, and I agree with their decision to have done that, and I will not block it. And what I did is I put three great Supreme Court justices on the court, and they happened to vote in favor of killing Roe v. Wade. What happened is we brought it back to the states, and the country is now coming together on this issue. It's been a great thing. How in the world could he call abortion on any level a great thing? How in the world? L let me just simply say this, and I'm going to address what he said about one issue, because this is what really disturbs me. Folks, what disturbs me and what nobody seems to be talking about, but we need to be talking about this. What disturbs me more than anything centers around this fact. Listen to me, folks, and listen to me good. For the first time in American history, we have two presidential candidates that are actually pro-abortion. You could say, oh, well, well, no, it's a great thing because Trump stopped Roe v. Wade. Folks, what you may have missed and what you might not be picking up on is since Roe v. Wade, abortions in this country have actually gone up. Do you understand that for the first time in a very, very long time, and we're actually gonna beat the all-time record high, we will in this country have killed more than a million babies. 
And some people believe that it is as much as 60% of those babies being black babies. Why is that the case? Why is it that the abortions have now gone up because of Roe v. Wade? Well, you heard President Trump mention it and you heard President Trump say that it was a wonderful thing. Yes, that's what he said. Folks, that's exactly what he said. I'm gonna play it again so you can watch this. Look what he says here, pay attention. This is not you know, produced, this is not AI. Listen to what he says on the court, and they happen to vote in favor of killing Roe v. Wade. What happened is we brought it back to the states, and the country is now coming together on this issue. It's been a great thing. Sorry, I misspoke. He said it's a great thing, not a wonderful thing. The country is coming together on abortion. And let's get into the biblical perspective for just one second. Let me just talk about this because I think this is really important. You see, I study Bible prophecy. I've given my life to the study of Bible prophecy, and I can make this statement with great confidence, and that's this. The United States of America is inconsequential in Bible prophecy. It is not mentioned in the Bible. And I know that there are a lot of people who look at terms and phrases like Babylon or think about lions or think about different symbolic attributes or different things, uh, and they begin to conflate those things with the United States of America, and nothing of a sort is accurate. The United States of America is inconsequential in Bible prophecy, and it has always been my hope that the reason why the United States was inconsequential in Bible prophecy was simply because there would be such a radical spiritual awakening that when the rapture happened, that the United States of America would become inconsequential by virtue of the fact that it is vacated because of the rapture. I still pray for that. I still hope for it. But quite frankly, folks, if there is no spiritual awakening in this country, I can promise you that the reason why the United States of America will become inconsequential is because of the fact that there are men who think it's a great idea that the United States is coming together on the subject of abortion. They are not coming together on the subject of abortion. Why in the world is this difficult to understand? Why is this so hard for people? Why is it so hard for people to think that it's actually okay? It's actually okay to stand up for the lives of babies. Why is it that people just find it convenient to simply say, I behaved irresponsibly, so guess what? I'm going to just go have an abortion. I'm just going to go ahead and murder a baby. The bottom line is this. These babies are precious. These babies are, are valuable because here's my question. If a child comes as the result of incest or rape, does that mean that that child should actually get the death sentence for what the rapist did to the woman? What kind of ridiculous notion is that? So we're going to kill the baby because of what the rapist did? I'm sorry. I cannot I cannot have a wholehearted, clean conscience and support a man who would say it's a great thing and that the United States of America is coming together on this. Nobody is coming together on this. Under the leadership of Joe Biden, abortions have increased dramatically, dramatically, because he has been looking for ways to bypass what happened with Roe v. Wade. And to think that somehow it's just a great accomplishment to overturn Roe v. Wade is great. It might be one of the most substantial legal rulings that will ever exist in my lifetime. But the problem is when you basically say, I did what I was politically obligated to do and I've overturned Roe v. Wade and now it's just up to the states and everybody else. What in the world are we doing? You're worried about George Floyd? You're worried about police killing black people, unarmed black people? How about we talk about the greatest civil rights issue of our day? If you look at the stats alone from this year, think about this. 2.8, it's no longer 3%, 2.8% of the childbearing population in this country are black women, yet they will account for almost 60% of those abortions. You want to look for a civil rights issue of the day? How about that? How about consider what's going on in that situation? Folks, I'm telling you this. I am begging you. Christians, stand up for righteousness. Speak out about these things. It is time to pray for former President Trump. It is time to talk to your pastors and ask your pastors to take a stand on this issue. It is time to contact all of the political pundits that are wanting to engage in this battle and speak truth to power. It's time to stop and to really consider what all of this is about. Listen, I am especially puzzled with President Trump right now. I am. 
because I've always had a deep-rooted love and admiration for the man. I've always respected him. I've always cared about him and have very much loved him. I voted for him both times. I don't understand why a man who cares so much for this country, so much for the citizens of this country, he does. He cares about the people of this country. He cares about the, the citizenry. Why is it for some reason he's making it acceptable to not care about the most vulnerable citizens of this country, the ones that are in the womb? It doesn't make sense. Do you understand that we have laws that make it illegal for mothers to drink alcohol while their babies are in their womb? They can have their baby taken away from them if they do that. Yet you can put an instrument inside that mother and murder that baby? How backwards is this? You want to know why, by the way, the medical abortions have gone up or why abortions have gone up in this country since Roe v. Wade has died? It is because there has been an upswing, a massive upswing in chemical abortions. The medical procedural abortions have died a terrible death. So many of those surgical abortions are going bye-bye. But you know what's going up? Chemical abortions. What's going up? The pills. They're about to be sold over the counter. And President Trump says it's a great thing. He's supposed to be the one that stands up for righteous causes. I don't care what the Supreme Court justices say. Murder is murder. When are we going to stand up for that? When are we going to speak up? When are we going to say, Lord Jesus, we trust you for our nation. I've heard, I am, I'm going to just tell you this. I am so sick and unbelievably tired of people arguing to me that it's all about winning the race. And once we win the race, then we'll have the freedom to do the things that we're going to do. Baloney. You either trust in God or you don't. You either function like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego or you don't. You say, I'm going to bow to the, to, the, to the statues and wait for an opportunity to live another day and be political or you don't. Oh yeah, you might get thrown in the incinerator. And all kinds of crazy things that happen. But is God great? Is he capable? I hope, I hope that we will not forget that. It is my prayer that there will be a spiritual awakening in this country that will be so significant, so radical, that it will turn the tide of what's happening. That we will not have the blood of these precious innocent children on our hands and that the spiritual awakening will extend to the leadership of this country, especially former President Trump. I think he can do a lot of good for this country, and I hope and I pray that if he does get into office, that he give up this lie that is being told to him by these political people that he must get behind abortion at any level. First time in U.S. history, folks. For the first time in U.S. history, we do not have a presidential candidate that does not support abortion. I'm sorry. You can't call Trump pro-life when he has this view on this issue. And if there's a pro-life ministry that's out there that is asking you to support President Trump because of this view to sort of overlook it, they're not a pro-life ministry. We need to be in prayer and we need to be seeking the Lord to ask God to change the man's mind. And do I think God can change his mind? Absolutely. I've watched God do it before. That's something we need to do. We need to pray and ask God for wisdom that the mind of President Trump would change. I'll say this. I don't know if he'll ever watch this video. It would be crazy if he did. I would be honored. I think he's an incredible person. I think he's smart. I think he's gifted. I think he's talented. I think he's the type of man that I want the rest of the world seeing as being a leader of our country. But bro, you got to change your mind on this. You've got to walk away from this. I would give, I'd give my right arm to be able to sit in the Oval Office and have a conversation with him about this. To just talk to him and understand why this is such a deadly way of looking at things. Folks, this is a spiritual issue. And until we deal with it spiritually, we're not going to win. We can take a cue from the president of El Salvador that once we start looking at things spiritually, then dealing with it in the spiritual, then we'll begin to see victory in the physical. It's that simple. Let's do something that I haven't done in a while on one of these videos. Let's pray for former President Trump. Father, in the name of Jesus, we know, Lord, that there is a possibility, a very distinct possibility, 
that former President Trump can become the President of the United States yet again. It would be historic. It would be, quite frankly, something very special as we've seen our country falling apart. But Lord, I pray that in the name of Jesus, you would move upon his heart to give up this ridiculous and deadly view of abortion. Help him to hate the view and to want to walk away from it. I pray that you bring the right people in his life to speak truth and wisdom into him, that he would change how he views these things, that you would be glorified, and that our country would be given one last chance. I know that we're in the last days, Lord, but may you just bring in one last chance. May there be one more spiritual awakening. That's what I pray for, Lord. Give us the body of Christ, the heart and the mind to want to minister to people all over that would see this and would change and recognize that you are God. As Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were spared in the fiery furnace and everybody around were burned to a crisp. May that be the case here, that you spare those that stand for righteousness and may you be glorified. So Lord, we love you and thank you. We look to you and we ask these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. Let's be in prayer. Let's spend some time fasting. There's a lot at stake. God bless you.